Hello boys and girls, welcome to my channel, I'm for Classic and welcome to Benchard. So for today what I do have in it is Corruption 2029. This game it is developed by the Bearded Ladies, the same developers behind Mutant Hero Zero Road to Eden. And yeah, this is a... I, I actually enjoy it a lot, that latest game, which was also, I believe, their first game. And they are using Unreal Engine 4, so I believe their last game was offered recently on Epic Store. And since I already tested this game on my GTX 650 Super and my GT740M, I decided to give it a try on my HD 7850. And this is the graphics settings that I do recommend you to use to play this game. So, yeah, that's pretty much the median presets at 1080p. So looking to the requirements, you can see that these guys ask for an E3 CPU, 4 gigs of RAM, and pretty much pretty much a, a GTX 660 or an HD 7850. So yeah, they are basically saying that the minimum requirements for this game, it is actually our graphic card in here. And so I decided to try, to try the game at low settings, and what I saw with the low settings, in this case it is called the minimum, um, what you get it is pretty much an average of 61 frames per second with the 1% of 54. The game it is capped to 62 frames per second. With the median settings, the settings that I do recommend you to play, you get an average of 35 frames per second with the 1% of 29. So it's pretty much an experience above 30 frames per second. If you decide to go with the eye settings, what you can expect it is an experience between 20 to 30 frames per second. So all of these settings are pretty playable since this is a turned based combat game XCOM style. So yeah, still I feel that the median settings it is the perfect choice for for our for our system. Since the median settings retains pretty much all the visuals from the eye settings, it's just the eye settings gets uh, revamped volumetric lightning and revamped shadow. So it's just small improvements over median, but costs a lot of performance. And the low settings, which in this case, in this game it is called minimum, what you get it is, well, it is a very big downgraded graphics since you boost volumetric lighting and all that kind of stuff. So I believe, in my opinion, since this is a turned based game and 30 frames per second, it is more than enough for this game. I think that median settings, it is really the settings you should go for. 30 frames per second, it is absolutely fine in this game, so I don't see any issue going with that. Alright, so yeah, that's the performance that you can expect. As for the game itself, if you played Mutant Hero Zero Road to Eden, this is the exactly same thing. Mutant Hero Zero Road to Eden was released like one year ago, one year and two months or one year and three months. And so it seems that the developers decided to recreate, let's say, the same type of game, the same game itself, I mean the same rules, the same gameplay, the same more or less perks, but inside a different theme. So instead of having a very frictional with uh, weird characters that looks like pigs and animals, they decided to go all out with this more realistic uh, future, which is Corruption 2029. But the gameplay, it's, the gameplay itself, it is pretty much the same. So if you never played Mutant Hero Zero Road to Eden, what you can expect from Corruption 2029, since it is the same thing, it is pretty much an XCOM style gameplay. All right? It is not as good as, as XCOM. Uh, keep that in mind, so XCOM will be eternally much better. But the, if you are tired of waiting for a new XCOM and you want a, a different game, but with more or less the same gameplay, Corruption 2029 it is for you. If we played Mutant Hero Zero before Road to Eden, like I just told you, this is pretty much the same thing. So it is up to you to decide if you should get this game or not. But if you did enjoy Mutant Hero Zero Road to Eden, uh, I'm pretty sure you are going to enjoy this game. This game doesn't have really a good story or anything like it. It is really the XCOM gameplay that stands out and the graphics and the visuals are really, really good for an indie developer. These guys really know what they are doing, but all, all this gameplay feels very generic and very, you know, a very big copy from XCOM. But still, it is quite good game. 
So you can get this game, unfortunately this is an Epic Store exclusive, you can get this game for $19.99. I think it's a very, very, very cheap price for a launch game. Alright, it's really a good price in my opinion. It's If you really want a game like this, uh, the price won't be scary at all. Because, I mean, $19.99 it is a really good price. The only downside... It is really the fact that it is an Epic Store exclusive, so you can't get it at the time of this video uh, from Steam or any other store, unfortunately. So you really need to buy it from, well, Epic Store, and that is. As for how bad or good this game have been received, this game it is pretty much scoring, scoring between 70 to 80 on reviews, so it's pretty reasonable, alright? But, yeah, like I, told, like I did told you, if you actually did enjoy Mutant Hero Zero, um, just go and buy this game because it will be pretty much the same, but you will have a very good experience with the game. Alright, so guys, I think that's all that I want to talk about uh, the game itself. Hope you keep enjoying the rest of the gameplay, which, well, didn't end well for me. I got a little bit unlucky, and I do hope to see you soon. Goodbye. Overwatch. Sharp. Roger. 
Roger.